I believe the term walking simulator came into fashion after the release of Dear Esther, a game that has aged incredibly poorly, but broke ground at the time by being a game about pretty much nothing. It had no real mechanics to speak of, and was essentially a student film project bolted onto a linear 3D map. It was an interesting art piece, but it was just a start, a blank canvas that would later be improved upon. In my opinion, there are a handful of seminal games in the genre that deserve special recognition. Games like Gone Home, Firewatch, and my personal favorite, What Remains of Edith Finch. Sagebrush, released in 2018, doesn't quite reach the same highs as the Stone Cold classics, but what it does do is nearly perfectly execute on the core concepts of the walking simulator formula, and it does so in style. The first thing you'll notice when you look at footage of Sagebrush is its low-poly retro art style. It's not only unique, but also very effective at producing an atmosphere of uneasiness as you explore. Little flourishes serve to enhance this atmosphere, things like buzzing swarms of flies above pixelated puddles of blood, flocks of birds flying off in the distance, and most especially the black and white vignetting that closes in on you as you listen to the game's mysterious audio tapes. We would meet for morning prayer with Father James in the chapel, then meet for breakfast, and then we'd set off to work for the day. Some of us worked the fields, others worked on expanding the compound. We had a school teacher, we had cooks. In the evening, we would study scripture or listen to one of Father's lectures. Then it would be time for penance, more prayer, and then sleep. I slept better those early nights than I had in years. I was home. Speaking of, the game's sound effects are phenomenal, serving to create an atmosphere of disquietude that immediately draws you in. The creak of old wood, the clunk of shoes on concrete flooring, the sound of bugs and animals in the wild desert just out of sight, it all hits perfectly. I'll admit the voice acting does sound a little bit off, but it's not terrible. You can clearly tell that it isn't voiced by professionals, but they're successful enough at their roles to make the story work. My flock, I have wonderful news. No. No. <clears throat> Most of what you do in Sagebrush is collect keys and tools to further search buildings around a fairly small cult compound. This collecting is really the central mechanic powering the game, and it had all the potential in the world to turn into a series of boring fetch quests. Luckily, the game is paced in such a way that finding a key always feels a little exciting. You know when you find a key that the next piece of the narrative puzzle will quickly follow. Whether it's shedding more light on the general situation and characters, or just leading you to another area to explore, nothing feels inconsequential. It helps that the map itself is small enough that backtracking never takes more than a minute, and a sprint button really keeps things brisk. The game also never breaks character and shows you the way to go. You always pick up your clues contextually. A note written about a character needing a code to a gate to have a midnight rendezvous, or bolt cutters sitting next to a note about locking someone's room up. It's not hard to keep track of where to go next, but you always have to pay attention to what the world is telling you to move on. My biggest nitpick is a pretty small one, honestly, and it's that the doors in the game shut on their own within seconds of you opening them. When I first started playing, the sound of the doors closing behind me did serve to raise my pulse a bit, but after a while, it became more of an annoyance. It's not a big deal, but it can break the immersion a bit when you open a door and it closes before you can even interact with any of the items in the room. The controls on console also left me fumbling for a bit. You really only use the four face buttons and one trigger to get around and interact with the world, but the problem comes primarily from the inventory menu. On Xbox, at least, you press Y to open the inventory, but you can't close it with B. That will instead turn your flashlight on and off, even while you're looking through your inventory. Lastly, since you have no on-screen cursor to work with, there are a few times where it's difficult to line up the view and get the option to interact with things to show up. For example, turning on lamps can be difficult because you have to have your viewpoint lined up perfectly with where the switch should be on the lamp to get the on and off prompt to appear. This is probably not as much of a problem on PC, but on console it leads to a lot of fiddling with the right analog stick to get the view just right. In all honesty, the menu thing might just be a problem with my own personal wiring, but either way, these things don't affect the quality of the core experience. 
I don't really want to touch on the story for obvious reasons, but I'll say the premise is executed on exceedingly well. I've always been something of a true crime fan, but it's the cult stuff that always really drew me in. There isn't anything especially shocking about the plot if you know something about cults, but seeing the game build to its inevitable conclusion is absorbing. You know off the bat that you're exploring a ranch where a horrible tragedy took place, but it's how this cult got to that point that fascinates. Sagebrush is a short game. I beat it in an hour and a half while exploring pretty extensively. It's also a cheap game, coming in at $5.99 on the Xbox and PlayStation stores, and currently on sale for $2.79 on Steam at the time of this video's release. This game was a pleasant surprise for me, one I came across by chance on a gaming forum, and here I am six years later singing its praises. If you hold any love for the walking simulator genre, you owe it to yourself to try this game. If you're a true crime aficionado or someone who finds cult activity an interesting subject to explore, definitely buy this game. If you're currently thinking to yourself that this game looks pretty cool, you should maybe drop six bucks and check it out. Sagebrush is a simple and compelling story told well, and I promise you won't regret giving it a shot. And that's Sagebrush. That's the end of this video. A little bit shorter, but uh, still took a little bit of effort. Obviously, uh, I'm not the greatest editor, but hopefully I got across uh, what I liked about this game because it's a game that's overlooked, in my opinion, that not many people have heard of. Uh, looking it up on YouTube, there are a couple videos, but none of them really have any views, so I figured why not add another one that's going to get no views uh, to the pile. So here we are. Um, yeah, this is... This is a fun one. I, I really do enjoy this game. Um, if, if you're somebody who likes walking simulators or is open to the idea of one, uh, I would highly suggest it, especially at 279 on Steam today. Um, or if it's not, when you're watching this video on sale, even at 599, it's it's good. Even you know, it's an hour and a half, so you know what you're getting into. I don't think you're gonna get any more playtime out of it, but if you're somebody who's looking for like hours to dollars ratio, uh, I, I don't know if this is gonna hit for you, but uh, if you're somebody who's looking for a good story, a nicely told story in a game, this is one that I feel like not a lot of people have talked about. Um, and I love the walking simulator genre, and I feel like this one is up there. There's a lot of really bad ones. There's some amazing ones that I mentioned in the video. Um, I feel like this is at the higher end, so uh, check it out if you like it. And uh, I don't know what my next video is going to be, but it might be Mass Effect 2. And if it is Mass Effect 2, this that could take a while. So it might be a long time before I get that done, but if I do that, I'm going to assume it'll be very long, probably longer than the Bioshock one, which was 27 minutes. Um, so I guess look forward to that, maybe. Um, otherwise, I'll stick to some food reviews and things like that in the meantime, of course, and ranting about prices on things because I'm broke. So anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, like and comment and subscribe and all that good stuff if you want to, and if you don't, whatever, and I will see you all on the next one.